just say yes you lead the way I'm not afraid of what it means for me to say this life you gave is not my own I'm trusting you to hear my yes and lead me on yes Lord yes Lord my life you gave Our title for this morning, I actually had three titles, but I'll just share with y'all one. The Exhortation. The art of writing, reading, and listening. God is exalted as he equips, empowers, and loves. Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. The Epistle to the Hebrews. Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The exhortation. This was the final exhortation. We always want to know who wrote the letter. What did they say? What does it mean? Who is the author? Who is this person? Interesting enough, the author of Hebrews is unknown. Many think it could have possibly been Luke, Clement of Rome, Barnabas, Apollos, Epaphras, Silas, Priscilla, a female, Paul. We always want it to be Paul. However, the writings of Paul are different from the stylized writings of the author in Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews was a, prof was a profound thinker with an impressive vocabulary, and this person knew the Greek language very well. He was clear, concise, and fluent in Greek. The author was delivering a word of encouragement for the Jewish Christian believers, as well as new converts. They were fearing for their lives because they were believers of the gospel. The Jewish believers were going through second guessing their conversion to Christianity. The book of Hebrews establishes the supremacy and sufficiency of Christ. The author was on a mission focused on sharing the word of God to the people of God so that they understood spirituality can only be found through the son of God, Jesus. In the King James Version, it states, make, instead of complete, make you perfect and complete in every good work. The word perfect in the Greek is katartizo, unfamiliar to us, but the Jewish believers, it was very familiar. To the doctors of that, of that time, it meant to set a broken bone to make it perfect. To the fishermen, it meant to mend a broken net to make it whole. To sailors, it meant to outfit a ship for a long voyage. To soldiers, it meant to equip an army for battle. 
foot soldiers for the Lord. Our Father in heaven is preparing us to be those foot soldiers for his army to help and win souls to Christ. God wants us to repair the breaks in the net so we can be prepared to be fishers of humanity outfitted for the battle, knowing the word of God, prayer in our spirit, love deep down in our soul. The writer speaks to well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. Jesus is better than the angels, for even the angels worship him. Jesus is better than Moses, for he created Moses. Jesus is better than the Arianic priesthood, for Jesus' sacrifice was one time and only one time. Jesus is better than the law. He is the mediator of the eternal covenant. That's a hallelujah shout right there. It's a hallelujah shout that he went to the cross for us, that we might not just live, but have life. The exhortation. In Hebrews 13, 1 and 2, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Remember them as though you're chained with them. Those who, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are also in the body. 38 years, the Frederica L. Hildebrand Missionary Society served and showed a God-bay love, that brotherly love for humanity. 38 years, the society has been committed, called into this ministry, compelled to be foot soldiers of the Lord, walking, talking, loving, going places where others don't or won't dare to go, seeing some things they'd rather not see, but yet, moving forward to fulfill the will of God the Father. 38 years of society loving the unlovable, serving unconditionally as the same love his son Jesus gave for us, shed on the cross for the sins of humanity. Missionaries equipped, empowered to serve. 38 years clothing those without, feeding the homeless, ministering to those in need, being a friend, all while, all while the Holy Spirit is keeping them, loving them, holding them close to his heart. Even when life is difficult, through tragedies, through life experiences, through relationships, the mission is for each one of us as we go about our day, entertaining angels unaware loving the unlovable, kindness when we don't feel like it, holding each other up in prayer when we ourselves are going through the struggle, whether the challenge is family, relationships, finances, your job, your home, is it mental, is it a physical issue, is it your spirituality? God is working it out. You see, we have to trust God. I don't know about you, but many of us like to be in control. But God is the one who's in control. Get out of his way. Get out of his way. You're giving out and taking in that agape love, that brotherly love for one and for all. You see, humanity is parched. They are thirsty for the love of God. We have to learn to love ourselves so that we can give love. We are those foot soldiers showing love, exemplifying love. If you are a woman of God, a man of God, a child of the king, you're somebody. Heads shouldn't be all bowed down. God exalted as he equips, God exalted, as he empowers. And he loves each one of us. Why do you think we have children, killing children? 
because love has been lost. Love has been lost. As we go out and provide what others are unable to provide, foot soldiers providing provision for the needy, water for the parched, conversation for the lonely, a voice for the voiceless, equipped and empowered to serve. We have that patience from God. The patience that we need, you can't do it of yourself. You can't, you can't, you can't. The patience, you cannot. Something happened to me on the weekend, I was like, wait a minute, you know I gotta pray, what, what, no, I'm just going off and going, just having a tangent, and I had to calm myself. I said, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord take care of this. And don't you know he did? I had to shout all day yesterday. I said, God, you're good. God, you are good. He, he will, see, we got, we got to trust him. We have, and see, this is what happens. When you all go out to minister to those people that you don't even know, your continence is different. That may be the only God that they see. The only God. Your homes are, are your sanctuary. These people don't even have a home. That bedside on that ground is their home. Something you can't even identify with. But the word says, you gotta remember as, as though you were in it. We have to be have empathetic so that we're in it with them. And you know what? If you're, not, if you're not real, if you're not authentic, they know it. They know it. You can't go up there looking all good, shucking and jacking. Oh yeah, I, I know you. No, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know when children are going to school and that may be the only lunch that they have for the day. The day when we were raising our children, we always, all we wanted for our kids is to have a roof over their head. Didn't have to have the latest Jordans, but they had to have a roof over their head and food on the table. That's what we wanted. I think sometimes we don't realize that young people are going through a lot. Because the mom might not be home, the dad may not live there, the father may not be home, the mother may not live there. These kids are struggling. Something we can't identify with because our children had food on the table. They had a bed to sleep in. They had covers to cover themselves with. They had a pillow at the bedside. Patience from God, not of ourselves. Joy from the love of Jesus, because he will work it out. He will work it out. Long suffering, now that's a tough one. Going through with those who need a shoulder to cry on. Going through with those who have a need, a, who need a shoulder to cry on. We need to show ourselves friendly. The exhortation, Hebrews has 13 chapters and in this fifth chapter, he talks about our spiritual immaturity and those in preparation for the new foot soldiers who are coming. The missionaries decided just said they had 12 new members. You gotta give yourselves a hand praise just for that. <laughs> we need foot soldiers on the ground. Hebrews 5 and 12 says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. The oracles of God, that was the Old Testament. They, the writer, he wanted the Jewish believers to understand, you can't just know the New Testament. You've got to know your history. So he wanted, he was telling them, it's not just about what's happening now. You've got to know from whence you've come. You've got to know the history. As babies, in order to have nourishment, you have to feed a baby. Isn't that right? If you don't feed the baby, the baby doesn't grow. We as adults have to, we as adults have to be, have to be fed daily for spiritual nourishment. How do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. Very simple. 
we have to have a life of prayer, of prayer, daily. We have to read the scriptures daily. We have to meditate upon his word daily. Attending church. Okay, this is a, for all you out there in virtual, virtual space, this is a, little, a pit stop right here. I'm gonna take a pause. For all of you in, virtual, in the virtual space, I'm so glad that you're here. But on Sunday morning, we've gotta take time. And come into the fellowship where the Holy Spirit is ready. Yes, I know the Holy Spirit's at home. I know it is for y'all. I know it is. I know it is. But you've got, to, you've got to embrace the Spirit and the people of God. This is the thing. Everybody in here has an issue. They all got issues. One by one, everybody up in here has got something that's bugging them. Just like you at home are struggling with something. There is no one that's not. Mm -mm. If they're not, that means they've gone on to glory. That's all the difference, that they've gone on to glory. That's what happened. Anybody that's living this life is here, and they're going through something. Either you're going in, you're going through, or you're coming out. Frederica Hildebrand L. Missionary Society. Frederica L. Hildebrand Missionary Society. Today is a day of celebration. Celebrating yourselves. You stood the test. You stood the time. 38 years reading his word. 38 years meditating upon his word. 38 years soaking in the presence of God in his word. We are forever students of the word of God from the old to the new. This never stops. Sometimes Pastor will get up here and she'll say something. I said, I didn't see that before. Oh my, I need to check myself. Yes, we need to be students of the word of God. The politicians out here, God bless you because we need somebody who's fighting for our country and doing what they do well. But trust me, they know they have to be in the word of God to be successful. You have to, because you don't know who's coming at you. You don't know what's being said behind your back. You don't know what's being said in front of your face even. Because when people look at you, they're smiling. Everything's good. Oh, yeah, we're doing the, mm-hmm. God wants you to be praying to make sure that when you see these people in your face, they're who they say they, they're who they say they are. The, the author also, you know, when we talk about the author not knowing the author, to me that's a big deal because I always want to know who wrote it. So maybe it was just me, me, but I always like to know who wrote the letter in the Word of God. And there's a reason why God didn't allow this one to come forth because he didn't want us to focus on the author. He wanted us to focus on the Word of God and what he was trying to give to people, be in their spirit. So the author speaks to renewing and growing in our spirituality, Hebrews 12 and 12. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths to your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. We have to know Jesus. 38 years of renewing our mind, 38 years of transformation, 38 years of renewing our strength, 38 years of endurance, 38 years of a faith walk, not seeing but always believing. We are his hands and feet, foot soldiers enduring to the end, meaning that it doesn't just stop when you get 50, 60, 70, 80, it don't stop. Because even if you can't get out of bed, you can pray. It never stops. A grandmother, a great-grandmother, of which I am, I pray that I stay healthy as long as I can. But how do you stay healthy? We have to eat right. We have to drink water. There's some things that we have to do for ourselves. And when you do things for yourself, you're showing that love for you. And who's better than to love yourself first so that we can pour that love to someone else? Now, that final exhortation, I'll repeat one more time. Make you complete, in that 21st verse, in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. 
as the author keeps talking about perfect, it bears repeating. Because he was perfect, knowing perfect in the, in the Greek is that katartizizo, we are striving daily to do our best. We shouldn't be shucking and jiving. When you go into the workplace, you do your best. When a mother wakes up her children for the morning day, she's doing her best. Whatever we do as the body of Christ, it cannot be mediocre. It cannot be mediocre. We have to strive for excellence. Foot soldiers are the, for the Lord. Our Father in heaven is preparing us to be those foot soldiers. Feet on the ground, doing the work of the Father. As I said, he wants to repair the breaks in the nets, but pre prepare to prepare, I'm sorry, to repair the breaks in people. In people. Because when we touch a life, we want them to be renewed. Whatever that touch is, it might only be a smile. It doesn't always have to be money, clothing. Someone just wants to know that they spoke to them that day. Sometimes nobody ever speaks to you. They just walk past. He wants us outfitted to help humanity. We have to have a listening ear, a voice that speaks love, a healing touch when you touch your brother or sister, authentic compassion, being present, endearing, Humanity in this 21st century, especially since the pandemic, families are going through, relationships are going through, finances are strained, love is becoming past tense. We have to be prepared to be that bridge over troubled water. Having the word of God in our hearts, prayers on the ready, prayers on the ready. People need, they, you can't be thinking about what you, Prayers on the ready in our, in our spirit, in our soul. Love and empathy has to be present. And what's the word say? We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, although we have to die. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Remember that old song? We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight each and every day. Even if you have to cry, you gotta press forward. You gotta press forward. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter what your past was like. Doesn't matter because life is constantly changing. Constantly changing. I apologize, y'all, because I'm diabetic, so I really have to eat, drink more water. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter that life is constantly changing. The thing that I love about this, what doesn't change? You all know this. What doesn't change? Huh? God. God does not change. People change. God's promises are today, tomorrow, yesterday, and forevermore. His, his, his promises don't change. I, I could promise you something. I could promise you something and then fall short. I'm sure if you ask my daughter, yeah, I fell through on a couple promises. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. So, so we, that's what we do, right? Because we're human. We're flesh. But God, that's why we have to trust him. We, the body of Christ, those that we're seeking to minister to, the, the ones that are out there in the world that need us, we have got to trust God that he's going to equip us to do the work of the Savior. The one thing because each and every day, and you all know this, every day that you wake up, you get new grace. So what happened yesterday, is, is that's gone, that's done. Yesterday is done, it's not coming back. Hmm? You will, you'll never see it again. And what does that tell us? That we're always striving forward to see what God has in store for us. And grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. He already went to the cross. So don't, have, don't stay in that pity party attitude. Those of you who are virtual, don't stay in the pity party, don't do it. You're going through, you're just going through like everybody else. You ain't by yourself. Keep moving forward. <laughs> so
So, as I would say, congratulations to the Frederica L. Hildebrand Missionary Society. I love y'all. You're the best, the, the best society ever. Just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, but, uh, all right, all right. I'm just, I'm wrapping this up now. This is, this is the end, okay? So listen, but I would be remiss. So I thank you all for listening to me, but I would be remiss if I did not ask the question. Is everyone in the house saved? Do you know my savior? Do you know my Jesus? Is everyone in the house saved? Huh? I don't see, I don't see it. Well, all right. All right. Now, virtual people. My, my virtual people, I'm talking to you, my virtual family out there. Because if you come into the family of God, we're all family. You know, y'all got Facebook family, but it's more than that. It's the, it's the body of Christ family. You want to be in Christ because he's the one who's going to keep you. As my sister said, that's when you have that vertical personal relationship, my virtual people. So my virtual folks, I, I, I really feel led to say a prayer right now for you to, to say this prayer. So anybody out there who's watching virtually, if you don't know Jesus, if you do, I'm so grateful. But if you don't, repeat these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and live. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Now, now if you're virtual and you live close by, come and visit us next Sunday if you're close by. If not, you still need to find a church home. So find yourself a church family that can help you go through your trials and your tribulations. You don't have to tell them everything. Just say, pray for me, because I got some things going on. That's all you have to say, virtual family. So family, and come, those of you who are here, if you did say that prayer, come on to the front and be part of our family here at First AME. So, is there, so we're all good? All right. If everybody's good, I'm good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I turn it over to our pastor and the missionary side. This has been the First Day of Me Church Manassas broadcast of our Sunday morning worship service. We are so excited and honored that you chose to be a part of our extended E family and pray that you have been truly blessed by today's powerful message. However, please know that you are always welcome and encouraged to join us in person every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. right here at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. Otherwise, join us again virtually next Sunday at 10 a.m. on our live stream broadcast or anytime after that at www.famechurch.com or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube just by searching at First AME Church Manassas. We also ask that you continue to support this ministry with your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. You can give online at famechurch.com slash giving or just mail your contribution to First AME Church Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, thank you for joining us today for the First Day of Me Church Manassas Sunday morning worship service. Reverend Dr. Etoria V. Goggins, pastor. Loving like Christ, living like Christ, leading like Christ. Be blessed. <laughs>